going on? This is Ken Reynolds from the Seattle Dragons, and this is the XFL Show. is cooking welcome football fans this is for the love of football and this is the xfl show i'm alan i'm vince and i'm bryant well we all watched the nfl kick off their season and damn it if we weren't a little nostalgic for actual kickoff returns and sideline interviews football may be back but we still miss the xfl this is episode 136. We want access, NFL. What are you doing? You saw the XFL kill it with so much access, and we got none of it in week one, Bryant. Nothing. And I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about it even more in depth in this show, but really it, it made me not have to worry about missing a, a kickoff return or something like that, right? It just I, I was fine. I could go to the bathroom in peace during an NFL game. I don't. I don't like that. I don't like having that that ability. That's what I'm saying. Vin, I didn't like it. It was Vin, Vince. I mean, I, I I watched some football with you this week in college football, and you know, even in that in that also, I mean, I was getting up. There was time I didn't have to pay attention to the screen. I miss needing to be glued. That's what the XFL well, did. They did not take the hit. These leaks. That's true. You know, it, it was a it was a different kind of experience. I'll, I'll say that. All together, and this is a whole experience. This is the XFL show, and we're going to have a lot of fun with you today. Seven two four five six five four XFL is the number of you for you to call. Toll free. You could text message it. Standard text messaging rates do apply. Seven two four five six five four XFL. If you want to interact directly, get on the show yourself, and of course at XFL show on Twitter, Instagram, Instagram Junior. Some people are on. Facebook, I don't know, whatever social media you're on, we're at XFL Show there. And of course, this is brought to you by Pretty Easy Podcast. This show brought to you by Pretty Easy Podcast. You could go to prettyeasypodcast.com to start your own show today, get your own producer, and sound great, and have an, a hand guiding you, helping you out as you try to fulfill your podcast dreams. Bryant with the finger wag. Oh, I was just saying, because I've seen that uh, Pretty Easy podcast in action firsthand, actually today. Yeah. They're right there for you. They are. Every single damn time, baby, at prettyeasypodcast.com. Vince is back this week, Bryant. We watched a lot of football. He's going to comment on some of the football we watched as it relates to the XFL. We're going to have uh, some fun with some questions regarding the XFL as it relates to the NFL's week one that we uh, are pretty excited to get into. We were discussing before we clicked record on this show, and it's going to be a really fun hot read coming up. But first, let's dink and dunk around the XFL real quick. The XFL fan line, you call it, you text it, and this week we're going to read one of your texts. This one comes from Davey in St. Louis. Can't imagine what the people of St. Louis are going through right now, having lost another pro football team, unfortunately, at least for the time being. I was out and about walking the streets in my Battlehawk shirt. Kaka to everybody, Brian, earlier today. But this one from Davey in St. Louis says, If y'all think you missed the XFL, at least you still got your NFL teams. This plane sucks. Kaka is still the law. I feel you, Davey. I feel that's you. right. Yeah, that's that's rough. <laughs> um, if, if there's any solace, at least know that the Rams played in front of the same amount of fans that they were able to play in front of at the um at the dome there in St. Louis this weekend. There was nobody I there. I don't think it's quite the same. <laughs> there was nobody there. There was nobody there at both stadiums. So J- Jerry Jones and Stan Kroenke were there and the 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 amount of access the that NBC gave us in that brand new can you imagine if that brand new stadium was broken in for an XFL game? What they would have done with the broad you would have had Diana Rossini or Pat McAfee running all over that place, showing you every nook and credit. Look at the state-of-the-art soda machines they got here. And look at the toilets. 
The toilets, they close and they open when you go stand in front of them. They're amazing. I don't know. I've heard that. It's a rumor. I haven't been I don't know there. if I'd stand in front of that toilet there. Uh, <laughs> you got to watch out, though. Um, Look how quick it is. But all NBC did was say, oh, Stan Kroenke and Jerry Jones walked around the stadium a whole lot before the game. Cool. Whatever. Yeah. I uh, you know, seeing it from outside, which I've driven by a few times, it's, it's pretty nice. Unfortunately, I wasn't there to be there for uh, the kickoff, but... I feel I feel you, David. I'm sorry. You know, no hard feelings. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> to LA because you know we didn't do anything. All we asked is for a football team, many times. Um, but yeah, don't two. worry. The, the Battle Hawks are coming back. I feel like there's there's nothing like you know right before kickoff of a football season when, when your your town and your your team is is just you know hyped and ready to go. And, and I, I feel bad for St. Louis. I mean, they, they got no college team, no, uh, you, you know, no professional team right now. I mean, that, that's they're really missing out. It's sad. Yeah, that's a bummer. We feel for you. And the caca is always the law right here. And this is the XFL show. We appreciate all the St. Louis fans keeping hope alive as well. You see the Battle Hawks football back there. I fully anticipate the Battle Hawks making their return flight once again. But, yeah, this weekend did have to sting, so we're here for you, Davey. Thanks for listening. Thanks for texting in 724-565-4XFL. Diana Rossini was talking XFL on social media during NFL Week 1, and she had an interesting observation that we're going to kind of sink our teeth into a little bit later. But she said, if this was the XFL, I think this could be a good time to get an interview with Goskowski, who... Missed all those field goals, Vince, on on uh, what was it? Was it uh, Monday night for Tennessee, yep. and and then redeemed totally redeemed himself. Redeemed himself is what yep. it's all about. It, I mean, X, he would have been interviewed multiple times if that was an XFL it, game. Diana would have had to have gotten gotten a desk and a couch to <laughs> just just sit there and uh, you know interview him just all night, you know, talking about you know how he's just you know completely screwing up. <laughs> do you think he would have uh he would have uh blamed the the, the the you know laces were in on half those kicks we just got to do a better job you know we're not executing plays uh, uh, we're gonna throw the whole damn playbook away and start over this is can't make me kick field goals all day long oh I, I i i didn't watch the game so i couldn't tell you if the laces were in or out but i guarantee you if pat mcafee was a kicker in in the xfl and he missed a kick and he was getting interviewed he definitely would have said that <laughs> guaranteed <laughs> he pat pat mcafee now i well at least now because he did go away from the xfl we understand why with hindsight he was training to be possibly the greatest professional wrestler of all time uh with his amazing match against adam cole so i used to fault him for leaving the xfl brian but not anymore well, that's a different podcast to have that discussion because I think yes. it's a certain son who had a better weekend uh, in particular during the summer in his first match. But uh, like regardless, yeah, what about Buster Radio on your favorite <laughs> podcast app? Are you drinking uh, shine? Now, this is water, <laughs> water in a mason jar. <laughs> Because Brian, so, am I right on that? People, yeah, you're right. People don't know this. Alan actually I miss bought the about 10,000. He bought about 10,000 mason jars. <laughs> Half of them are hand sanitizer, homemade. The other one's water. He takes his chances every single time. Um, West Virginia. Yeah, I do wish Almost that we got some heaven. <laughs> <laughs> That was Alan uh, right after the bankruptcy <laughs> hearing, by the way, too, from the XFL. It was. So, yeah, that's and th- this is why you need to watch the video if you're listening to the podcast. <laughs> and uh, we thank you for subscribing to the YouTube channel. Uh, all right. We'll, we'll get more into that. That's a cool looking cup there. Um, well, no, that's we'll, six cups of coffee over the last two days. That's what oh, is it? Oh, wow. I thought that was like some sort of cool squiggly co- uh, cup. That's and that's not he does not drink coffee. We all know Bryant drinks ice cream from Starbucks exclusively. Uh, we'll get into <laughs> Diana Rossini's observation about sideline interviews a little bit later. That kind of was the seed that was planted for our uh, interesting debates when discussions we'll have coming up. But uh, last year, Dinkin and Duncan, uh, I'm going to play us a little clip that was a revelation of sorts from one of the new owners of the XFL, Danny Garcia, talking about, well, an injury she sustained, celebrating winning ownership and bankruptcy court of the XFL along with Redbird Capital and her partner, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Let's go ahead, take a listen. 
Hey guys, I am at Rienzi Strength Orlando and I wanted to take a moment and tell you the story about something that happened to me the night I found out I got the XFL. So one moment I'm running towards Dave and I'm jumping up and down yelling, I got it, I got it. Next moment I'm on the floor with a torn cap muscle. In fact, I have been recovering these past eight weeks and also reassessing because you know, truthfully, setbacks are moments for reassessment. And I recognize that number one, going to be busier than ever. And secondly, I want muscles that can show and go. So I'm going to need new training techniques. I want to re-examine my diet. I want to re-examine stress levels. And I'm hoping to share all this with you so that it can be a benefit to you. And you can hopefully incorporate some of this. You know, my commitment is to be the most curvuscular tear person that I know. Um, and also to be able to share with you the insights that I learned. So it's going to be great. And I can't wait. Trying to be curvuscular, try, trying to get that regimen going where you're going to be functional, but also look great. It's tough. So we wish Danny Garcia the best in her recovery. But yeah, jumping around like that and you got the the mass in, in the calves, that's a recipe for disaster. So that's one of the reasons why I never jump, Bryant. Uh, I am a victim of... Uh of celebrating too extreme to where you feel like you pulled something that happened 2014 uh, Western conference final Stanley cup playoffs game seven overtime goal, uh, Kings of Black Hawks. And I was on the ground <laughs> right after that goal because oh! I jumped up too much too high. So if the excitement <laughs> level, what did, they, what did they use to get you back up? That's, uh, <laughs> that's an interesting question. There. <laughs> uh, you know, you got to will yourself in those situations, Vince. And, you know, just the setbacks are moments of, of triumph. That you just have to overcome. And that's what I did. I overcame my injury to celebrate that Stanley Cup victory in 2014. But uh, if I could see her excitement in what I had of excitement that day, uh, then I'm really excited for what she's going to be putting into in the XFL. I, I, you know, a, it sucks she got injured, but I just love that the XFL has an owner that goes so hard for a celebration, Vince. That's what it's all about. Get, uh, yeah, she was, should be hyped. She's the first female owner of a sports league in the United States. I was just impressed to hear her talk about how she needs to be in great physical condition in order to run this league. Yeah. I mean, what, what kind of what kind of shape is Roger Goodell in? <laughs> oh, you man. Know, you Don't know, get me you know, started. Oliver Luck would run the steps after uh, the summer showcases. I saw him. I stayed long enough to, to I, see I, him do. I don't those. know if I believe that. I always saw him. I'm not even joking with you. I saw him. But, yeah, you're right. No, yeah, Roger Goodell. All day, all night, I'm sure, on the XFL, so it's going to be good. Hell yeah. So Danny Garcia is the kind of owner we want for sure. Roger Goodell's commissioner. Yeah, uh, Vince, I noticed he's this 2020 is a rough year on all of us, so I'm not going to fault him. But he's got probably <laughs> a, a lot of business dinners, a lot of steak business dinners. And it's you got to be in shape forever. All the running around those executives do. Danny Garcia, hell of an owner, though. I cannot wait. We got actually some news here coming up on something she's going to be doing along with some more XFLers in the NFL talk right here in this week's Cover 2. I'm wondering what the hell you're doing in this league. All right. First, <laughs> we'll go to players that are actually in the league in the NFL. Jeff Bidette, former OU wide receiver, Vince, and Dallas Renegade, signs to the Washington football team's practice squad, which I believe we have a total of 17 XFLers in the NFL right now. Although none of them saw playing time, or I don't even know if any of them were active in week one. When do you anticipate we'll see the first XFLer on the field, Vince? Uh, well, yeah, I, I think it's going to be probably within, you know, within the first few weeks of the season, I would think, you know, injuries are happening. You know, you're also able to pull up those extra guys from the practice squad from each game, as we talked about. I mean, I'd say it's just a matter of time. I, I think it's going to be sooner than we think. I'm hoping. I'm hoping it's. It could be this week. There's been talk. Storm Norton might be able to sneak on to the Chargers active list, Bryant, but not quite yet. We saw Will Greer was ahead of P.J. Walker last week for the Panthers. Not a surprise to a lot of people, but of course we're monitoring that situation. We've been talking a lot about that. Um, Josh Hawkins also, just a quick note, was uh, removed from the Atlanta practice squad. So we did lose one XFLer in the NFL. He was cut, but with how practice squads work, I'm sure he'll get picked back up. Um, 
Which player, though, this is the question I want to ask you, Brian. Which player, talk, speaking of Diana Rossini, would you have wanted to see interviewed the most in week one, uh, XFL style? Which would, which you, or not who would you have wanted to, but who do you think would have been best stemming from what you saw in week one of the NFL? Um, I'm not going to go player because I feel like, you know, you could go player easily, but because uh, the XFL was interviewing everyone, anyone and everyone they can get on the sidelines, they were interviewing. Um, I think you have to go coach and you have to try to put a mic in Bill Belichick's face. I know you guys don't like him. and I, I know you guys aren't, aren't too big of a fans of him, but to see what he would do on television in the middle of a drive with a microphone in his face, I think that's television right there. I think he'd rip the interviewer's sleeves off like he does in that well, subway that's, that's commercial. <laughs> I think that's something we'd all want to yeah. see what, what happens. He'd cut the, the sleeves sleeves off the, off the interviewer. A subway what, commercial, I think. Well, I don't know. I would have liked to see them ask, uh, go up to Saquon Barkley and be like, Saquon, what does it feel like to have to know Ben Roethlisberger has more rushing yards than you do today? That's what I was like. <laughs> Steelers, something uh, like that, right, Vince? That would have been the perfect kind of XFL style would, interview. It would have been, from it would have been funny. But they don't, I, the XFL didn't ask those questions. That was not like that. Don't don't make it what no. it wasn't. Well, well I'll, I'll tell you. They went up to Matt well, McLaurin and said, why do you suck so bad today, pretty that much? I didn't say that. They said, what's going on and what do you have to do to change this? And he said, throw out the playbook. He said it. Okay, then. They would have said, Saquon, what do you have to do to end up having more rushing yards than Ben Roethlisberger? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. Well, it's, uh, you, you probably watched every single one of these games. I can't imagine you probably saw a few players you'd want interviewed. Me? Yeah. Yeah, I – yeah, I, I I caught just about a little, at least a little bit of every single game this week. Um, in terms of players, uh, well, let me think. Uh, let me think about that in terms in terms of players. I, I well, because here's I the thing, and I and I and I understand. I don't mean to cut you off, bits, but if you think about it, we didn't know what players we wanted to have on the mic in the XFL until we had them on a mic. Right. So we didn't know any of these players. So I think the th same thing is in the NFL because these players don't have personalities, at least on field, on the field personalities that we can actually enjoy that we know about. So we don't know who's actually going to be good on the mic because we don't get that access. Uh, that's true. And I, and coming up in the, in the hot read, I'm, I'm going to have some uh, uh, coach interaction that I, that I wish I could have seen XFLized that, I, that I'll be talking about. Oh, yeah. It was just, you're, you're talking. I think I know where you're going, but I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent sure. It's wrong. We'll see. We'll see what we get there. Let's go to part two here. The cover two. Danny Garcia. Back to her. Uh, I'm really excited for this because this is uh, going to be uh, maybe the first. I mean, unless she talks beforehand, one of the first major speaking engagements for the new XFL owner uh, since acquiring the league. Danny Garcia will be speaking at the ESPNW Women's Women's Sports Summit. And that takes place Tuesday, October 20th, and Wednesday, October 21st. And it will be a virtual event that uh, you can attend and, and watch. So I definitely will be watching this, Vince. Uh, cannot wait to hear from... I mean, I don't know how much we'll hear about the actual league and if any news gets broken, because this is uh, a summit uh, when it's it's talking about women in sports. And I'm sure they'll discuss it a little bit, but this, is just, this will be... A pretty major thing for Danny Garcia, the first female owner of a sports league, to be talking at this event and all the other speaking engagements, I'm sure, that are coming up for her. Yeah, I'm very, very interested to see what she has to say, you know, combined with, you know, and and Brian could probably speak to this a little bit, but the uh, uh, USWL or UWSL. United States Women's Soccer League. Yeah, yeah, that all all uh, female owned organization in LA. Uh, I imagine they're going to have a presence at this as well, and it's going to be interesting to see the interactions between those two groups uh, with uh, women a as sports owners. I think it's a great thing, and I'm I'm very interested to see it. Yeah, this is this is definitely something we're marking our calendars for here, Brian. This is kind of one of the NWSL. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's not NWSL. It's not a. a an XFL press conference or anything. It's not an XFL interview even, but it's one of the owners of the XFL speaking in a sports summit. This is, this is something to look forward to for XFL fans. I would say mark your calendars. 
it's we're going to get insight into the league and what her thoughts are and if anything into would. if anything into one of the owners of the league and the personalities behind the the new ownership of the league which is we all know the rock but Danny Garcia is someone that everybody I think is going to start getting to know a lot better well, I think also the, the the reasoning behind the purchase, right? We'll probably get some more information there, why she pursued this and why um, she's excited and why she jumped for joy and, and tore, a, tore, some, tore a calf muscle when she uh, she got this. But, um, yeah, I'll be all ears. I mean, it, October is a little far away for me, but, again, time is so um, – what do you call it? T- time is relative right now, and it feels like time is all bundled up. We've been in – the XFL – what in the XFL uh, – Close down. It felt like yesterday was like six months ago. Maybe. Uh, yeah, about yeah, uh, five, mm-hmm. five, six months ago. I just realized this summit though that I'm going to watch. Uh, the first day of it is uh, my wedding day, so I will. But that I think That's it's still in happening? the morning. Uh, as of now, as of now, <laughs> third time's a charm. Rescheduling, uh, but I'm marking my calendar. Sorry, honey. I'm uh, going to be watching Danny Garcia at the ESPNW Women's Sports Summit. Do you, Vince, do you think Danny Garcia is going to be out there in front representing the league to, in media appearances a whole lot? Do you think that's only going to be The Rock? Or do you think that'll be maybe a third person who's the commissioner? Uh, it's hard It's hard to say. I, I mean, I don't know, admittedly don't know a whole lot about Danny Garcia. I'm interested in, in learning more. And, and I think, you know, if she is a great speaker, if she is a, a you know a great front person uh, for an organization, why not have her be out in front, you know, a, as much as you can? Obviously, The Rock, you're not going to get any more star power than that. But that that man's busy. That man is is in in high demand, and you know, it, it, it obviously that's one of the, our biggest questions is in you know, how much uh, uh, of a you know, influence and, and out in front is he really going to be? But Danny Garcia could be equally as important uh, if she if she is a great uh, speaker and can really command a room and a great salesperson to sell this product to get people excited about it. What about you, Bryant? You think there's going to be a, a set person who's going to be that representative, or do you think it'll be a mixture of them all? Do you think we'll see? Do you think we'll see Danny Garcia out there in front of the media, in front of the cameras, a whole lot, representing the league and talking about it, getting people hyped? Well, up until when the cities were revealed, Vince McMahon was a huge part of the XFL originally, right? He he came out in front. He would always introduce or be introduced before Oliver Luck. Um, he, he tried to be a voice as much as possible, and then he kind of handed over the reins to Oliver Luck um, after that. Same thing can kind of happen, you know. You you get the rock, you get Danny Garcia on the same page to to get this league, you know, the, the noise started maybe. But you're definitely going to need a commissioner. You're going to need somebody who can actually deal with the day in and day out business of of running a football league. So, may, I can see the rock and Danny Garcia being a part of it. I still feel like it'd be a third person that's really going to be uh, the focal point of this league going forward. And I nominate you to be the next commissioner of the XFL. That's what I'm hoping for. If it's not Oliver Luck, I just want us to put that out there right now. I'm hoping it's Bryant Solorzano as the next XFL commissioner if Danny Garcia is listening. How do you like that endorsement? Well, thank you. I I, I, I accept your endorsement, and, and I move towards 2020. One, two. It's, it's, it's also just so that you'll be too busy to do the show, and it could just be me and Vince moving forward. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that even more. Just Great. because, you know, because you get Vince really worked up before each show and he gets mad because you're always fumbling with your your internet and all that. Mm-hmm. New, new computer, buddy. New computer. Yeah. We're, good. We're good moving forward. It's so far so good. We got one segment for it, though. Let's see how it handles. <laughs> Let's see how it handles. All right. This week's hot read is going to be fun. We're going to go back into the discussion stemming from NFL week number one and Put an XFL spin on it, of course, and we're going to do it the way we always Play do fast, it. do it again. Quick, smooth, crisp, some would say. It's this week's Hot Read. All right, so week one in the NFL had the specter for many of the XFL lurking during every single touchback, every missed opportunity for an interview, on the sidelines by CBS, Fox, NBC, and ESPN. So I ask you, we'll start Vince, with Vince. 
what did week one in the NFL make you miss most about the XFL? It, it, it was watching, you know, coaches call plays on the sidelines, you know, at during drives. Uh, just having those coaches mic'd up, having you know, really the game and the play being secondary to just watching these coaches do their thing. And I, and I kept thinking about, you know, how great would John Gruden have been, you know, mic'd up for a drive of, of that Raider game against the Panthers. You know, we saw him in the booth so many times uh, and, and, you know, in studio segments calling out plays. Uh, but how great would it see him to actually do the real thing? And that got me thinking about you got this coming Monday night, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, new stadium, Raiders, Saints. What would it be like to see John Gruden, Sean Payton going at it, uh, you know, side by side? I mean, I, that was was one of my favorite things about the XFL. And, and I really missed not seeing it with, with these coaches. Don't, we haven't even mentioned and we kind of forgot, I think, the play calling. The Vince, you just alluded to it. We, we, the the elusiveness, uh, the elusiveness of actually being able to hear what was being called. Are we okay with that, Alan? What was being called, <laughs> um, uh, uh, you know, on the field? Ah, man, I forgot about that. I missed that too. Look, I, I love the NFL. I love college football. I love football. But for lack of a better words, different man. It, the XFL was so much better, <laughs> and it was so much more entertaining. And, and, and I really do miss like the the behind the scenes look. Imagine going in um, into that Washington locker room during halftime like they did in the XFL and then cheering on and trying to get riled up, you know, for, um, I'm not forgetting it now. It probably excuse me, but you know what I'm saying? There was access there that we don't get now and that I missed. I'm just sorry. sorry. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of access we're not getting. I think that from the interviews, from the play calling, from kickoffs, which is just really the the on field thing you can notice right away, Sam Schwartzstein kind of would you call it trolling what he was doing last week, just saying, "Hey, anybody who notices a touchback, hit me up." Ninety three percent kickoff <laughs> return rate in the XFL. From all, all of it, it combined, just you know, as an XFL freak like I am and like we are, that just all of it I missed. But most of all, I do think it feeling like just. Total, complete football immersion is what the XFL felt like. And a lot of it is what Vince talked about with the the play calling and the X's and O's aspect of it. When you watch the XFL, it, it, was, it was very much like you were going diving headfirst into a complete football experience, whereas this week one in the NFL, I'm watching it and I'm, it's a football experience, but it's not... It's not what I'm watching on the field that I'm worried about or thinking about completely. You have fantasy football. You have, well, with really with just the, the climate also with social justice uh, conversations going on that you're noticing watching the the broadcasts from the, the drama that they'll bring up with each team, which is a, a part of what the XFL presented as well. But in terms of like the X's and the O's and the actual – tit for tat within the game the xfl gave you access to a lot more of that i'd say a, a big chunk of it was the play calling on the sidelines and the interviews on the sidelines just the actual feeling and emotion of the game was raw way more raw watching an xfl telecast than what we got in the nfl in week one the nfl had some great games in week one but remember the xfl even when the games weren't great you felt like you went through something each and every game you watched <laughs> And that's true, and and I think one of the things that you know helped that presentation on the XFL was that there was only one game at a time. Yeah, you, you well, know? that's a that's uh, a big you, help. You you were able to get invested in that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, with the NFL, one o'clock, four o'clock, or, or or ten a.m. and one p.m. for some Crack people. Crack dawn. Some people say. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, or in college football, you know, starting at nine a.m. You know, I'm I'm watching. I'm watching at least five games at a time, you know. Oh. Uh, and so, so, so I'm not, I'm not focusing on, on, you know, you know, I don't have time to get to get, you know, engulfed in that kind of stuff. But you know, uh, for for a, a Thursday night game, uh, a Sunday night game, a Monday night game, that that's where you really miss it. That that's where, yeah, you'd love to see that kind of access because because they're telling a story. 
and 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 that really helps the, the storytelling you get wrapped up in that kind of stuff and, and you know what watching a single game yeah I, I do miss a lot of that access i think on uh, sunday night football kind of and, and that was gonna bring up that point about having only one game on at a time and you get to kind of focus on that game sunday night the rams opened that stadium uh it was a pretty close game pretty good battle between uh the, the cowboys and the rams but I found myself switching back, watching the Dodgers, going back to the game, maybe switching over to the hockey game, going back. And it's not because I didn't care so much about what was happening in the Rams game, but I felt like I could change the channel and not miss anything. With the XFL, if I change the channel in the middle of a play, I'm missing a coach's call, I'm missing an interview, I'm missing an explanation. I only have 25 seconds plus the spotting of the ball. Like, It just felt like I could not be so engaged in an NFL game and understand what's going on. Or as an XFL game, I wanted to go back and watch it two or three times. And I have most of them, but <laughs> to be in, to be invested in an XFL game uh, felt different. It, it felt better. And with the NFL, especially in the morning when I, you know, cause I have channel 702 on direct TV with all eight games and little squares. Uh, it's, it's just hard to get invested the way I was with the XFL. Yep, that's for sure. And with the the NFL Week One, hey, we got a lot of we have a it was football. Of course, we were. I I loved it. Should they have been playing? That's a whole other argument. But the fact is, it it accomplished. I think what it set out to do the XFL, which was totally set itself apart, make it a completely different product, a complete different experience. And with the NFL coming back, I as a football fan really noticed just how different that was in the spring compared to the fall with the NFL's return here. And I think that also points out uh, Jerry Cardinale had a pretty interesting quote from Sportico. Our friend Mike Mitchell tweeted this out, Bryant. And I really think uh, this hits the nail on the head for what really week one of the NFL showed me. And he, he said, one of the new owners of the XFL, by the way, the XFL was a tutorial for me. I learned a lot. And one of the things that I came away from in my diligence before he bought the league was that spring football is legitimate and you shouldn't think of it as a mini-me NFL. What we saw this past week in week one, totally different from what we saw in the spring, and that is the whole point. Yeah, and, and you could go back and watch the first broadcast on Fox and you could hear me say that this <laughs> league needs to be different, uh, and that's really what it's all about. And and, and it was, because, in, and, that's what, and that's what was most exciting to me. You know, the NFL is different. From, from college. College is different from high school. And the high school is different from the from the XFL. They're, they're all different experiences. They're all football that, that we want more. And, and Alan could tell you about the differences in the CFL. Uh, and, and and that's what makes it exciting. You know, we all love football. We all, yeah, we all want to see more of it. But we also want to see some different football all the time. That's, that's what I love about it. Well, that's why the AAF, and Vince, you're famously saying, I didn't want to watch a minor league version of the NFL where it's just NFL rules, but the players aren't as good, right? We, we'll, we'll sit here yeah. and admit it, and the players yeah. themselves can probably admit it, that they are there because they are admittedly not as good as NFL players. But that's not the point. The point is, is to make quality football uh, uh, something that you enjoy watching as a fan and that's what these players did. Yeah. Um, a lot of great football yeah. players and a lot of great entertainment on television. Yeah. It didn't need to be, you know, the the best games ever, but as, or the best players ever. But as long as it was good and it was crisp and, and it was a good presentation, yeah, I, I'll watch it every day of the week. Hell yeah, I will. And I'm going to be watching the NFL. But each week, I'm going to be thinking this way, man, I'd love to be seeing some touchbacks right now. Love to be seeing some some coaches screaming at their players through the headset right now, and you just and don't get God that. And for God's sake, would somebody please go for three? Yes, go for three! Damn it! Come back yelling. periods. Oh. I was yelling. <laughs> I was yelling that the whole time. The Steelers could have really pounded the Giants, Vince, if they would have just went for three. And then I remembered. Oh, they can't. Oh well. All right. Two so points from the two yard line just seems too easy now, right? It's just, it's, like it should be from the this? five. Two point what conversions is, should be from the five. What is this mighty might football? Come on. <laughs> when are we going to get past this? I, I just don't know when we're going to get past missing the XFL. I just hope there's a there's some light at the end of the tunnel wow. here, and we, we and we get there. I want a date. That's what I want. 
Well, we're going to be waiting on pins and needles like you all are. And, of course, we're going to be discussing every single bit of news and information that come out each and every week right here on the program. So, we, you know, that's what we do. We can, Bryant's an expert at it, making them, uh, taking a little bit and stretching it out and making it into a fantastic discussion or a piece of the show. And uh, we've been doing this for now oh, going on oh, over two years headed into year three uh and we're ready for some more and hey you might call this a slow news week but it was a fun football week that's for sure and i'm happy vince was back brian excellent show this week guys it was a lot of fun yeah my computer didn't crash i think yes I, i'm excited for this new yes you know, people out there build your own computers it's actually pretty easy and a lot of it, fun it is <laughs> And go pretty to prettyeasypodcast.com <laughs> because it's pretty easy to get your podcast done if you just have someone helping you out at a low rate. That's what it's all about. Exactly. But here's actually some karma for you, Brian. You can't tell because right now I'm handling the video aspect of this. And uh, your computer held up, but my monitor just like went out. So... Uh, Is that when you were jimmying it with your phone? You were trying to like hold I it got up. My, you can still see me, but it's yeah. The video, the pro- probably like the last, I don't know, five ten minutes of the show. People have just seen the uh, on the YouTube version at least. Our faces went away. We apologize for that, but maybe I got to build a new computer like Bryant because mine's mine's been through a lot of well, that's XFL what you get for blaming me. That's what you get for blaming the beginning of the show delay on me when it was really you asking me to do so much. You know, with this new computer, I, I don't have my read, but I'll, I'll try to remember it. Uh, make sure you listen to us every single Friday morning on your favorite podcast uh, app, either Apple, Google, Spotify, or wherever you may be, uh, or wherever you want, I guess. Uh, make sure you give us five stars. Uh, check us out on all social media platforms at XFL Show. And youtube.com slash this is the XFL show, the official YouTube page of this is the XFL show. And Vince, you got anything to plug? Like uh, maybe a podcast about everyone's favorite football team in the college football ranks? Uh, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll give it out. If, if you're a fan of the University of Pittsburgh or if you want to just hear some good college football talk, check out the Hail to Pit podcast wherever you may find good podcast a a pretty easy podcast production hell yeah hell to pit baby beat syracuse bryant we'd have you on to talk ucla on that show but they're not playing yet although that might change i I probably wouldn't be the best to to, to talk about (laughs) ucla football regardless one league at a time one league at a time yeah we're not gonna i'm already throwing too much college maybe you know what actually if ucla decides to play football i might be good with it because i'm really good about talking about football before the actual <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's what his specialty. All right, everybody, <laughs> well, we're getting out of here. Thanks for subscribing, leaving your reviews on Apple Podcasts, and uh, watching our ridiculous videos. They're getting more and more fun each week. We're glad to be back on YouTube for sure, and uh, we've got some things up our sleeves for that. Although it kind of crapped out on us here at the end, but what are you gonna do? You're just gonna press on and keep hoping. Danny Garcia, the Rock and Redbird Capital. And give us something, some big announcement. And then we're going to really be going to the moon on this show. But we're having a lot of fun in the meantime, between time. Don't forget that number again. I'm going to give it out again, Brian, just because I want people to call it. 724-565-4XFL to call the XFL fan line. We'd love to play your calls here on the show. All right. For Brian, for Vince, I'm Alan. We'll see you next week. This is the XFL show. Remember, they're listening.